grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have ever watched the Maury Povich show, my condolences. Just kidding, sort of. While Maury himself seems to be a quiet, gentle soul in general, his television talk show, which aired in 1991 and only stopped last year, attempted to cover a broad range of topics, but was famous for one particular topic, determining paternity. This involved bringing in women and relatives and what sometimes could be an entire bank of men, or at least several options, with the purpose of definitively pinning down which children belonged genetically to which man. I must state, this is not the godly nor the best way to try to figure that out. The most desired and healthy way is monogamy. Period. But there they were, with all of the intricacies of life, trying to figure out whether someone was telling the truth or not. Maury and his team of sensationalists dug deeply into every overdramatic angle they possibly could because it got ratings. And eventually, oh, about one hour later, the paternity test results they could have disclosed in the first five minutes of the show had a great reveal. Feelings were hurt. Damage was done. Arguments and blows ensued in the meantime because consumers apparently fed off that steamy gossip and a disturbing display of humanity at some of its worst. Guests said things for all the world to see that should have been kept private that they could never erase, but the truth came out eventually. Keep in mind that these are humans who are not divine. Trust me, today's gospel is in here somewhere. Jesus is fully human and fully divine. So even if Mary and Joseph had been on the Povich show, that is not going to work, is it? It says here, that the Holy Spirit is the Father and that God is also the Father and that, wait, I, I don't understand. Jo Joseph, you, you aren't Jesus. Jo uh, by a lot, uh, father, uh, mm. That's the truth. Our created human biology does not cover the enormity and divinity of our holy God, the creator of all things. This point in and of itself calls people to question what Jesus means. Today, we read about those Pharisees and scribes with the same problem. They challenged Jesus, slandering his teachings and his very existence by questioning his paternity, his rights to teach them anything. You, Jesus, are illegitimate. We are Abraham's kids and we are legitimate. Who are you? Who's your daddy? so to speak. Ooh, she went there. Yet we have here in the USA wonders why the Middle East can never, ever seem to get along. Do we understand that that's connected? We are not in the hotbed of geography. They are. And yet people in this country question Jesus' existence for those very same reasons. We know how easy it is for folks who do not know Jesus or study his word to hear scripture differently than those who do. There are things that do not make sense to us, and that's not good enough for us a lot. That's why, in fact, faith exists. We humans cannot know all that God does, and truthfully, we really don't want to know everything he knows. The coffee mug in my office says, one of several, I wonder sometimes if we ever give God a headache. Now that was stated by Dante Hall, age eight, but doesn't it apply? Jesus spoke the truth. Jesus spoke faith 
facts. He was instructed by his heavenly father. Jesus tells us that sin itself makes slaves out of us. The difference between a slave and a son can be vast. We are Abraham's children and haven't been slaves for anyone is a very human way to say, you have no power over us and we're not going to let you, so there. If you've been in Bible study, you've recently heard a version of that in Hebrews, talking about high priests and such. They were unteachable. They did not trust. They could not accept the very new things that God was doing for them. And because they doubted Jesus and sought to kill him, they were acting out sin, evil. In fact, after this gospel lesson, Jesus continues and says this, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Are you doing that? Is implied. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. And they will argue, we were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, God. And then Jesus will respond, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came out and have come from God. And then they will say, Jesus has a demon. And they will prepare to stone him to death. But Jesus will escape death. He will die, but he will rise. And their critical lack of faith leads them away from the facts, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And there is something good old Maury and Jesus actually do have in common in that. The ability to get at the real truth. Maury used litmus tests because he's far from divine. Jesus' test of authentic belief. Jesus says, if you remain in my word. If you abide in my word, Jesus expects his followers to be diligent in studying God's holy word and not just the parts they like. Why? Because a relationship with Jesus requires our regular participation. He makes three promises. Only one Only two, only three, take a listen, one at a time. Promise one, we will be his disciples if we remain in the world. Number two, we will know the truth if we remain in the word. Number three, the truth will make us free if we remain in the word. That's a big if. It can be. True discipleship, that relationship with Jesus, involves becoming like our teacher, Christ, in thoughts, words, and deeds. You want to know the real identity? You want to know your real identity? What do you do? And how do you do it? We do not believe works get us into heaven, but we do know that we can either produce good fruit or bad fruit when it comes to living our lives in the Lord, in the Word. And we know Jesus is looking for good fruit production in those he claims and in those he saves. At the time, Jesus was saying these very unpopular faith facts, the disciples of Rabbi would live close to him for a long period of time He would become a mini-me of a rabbi. How he thought, daily practices, faithful behavior. We might call that shadowing. We disciples of Jesus are to become as much like him as possible. The word from the word here is meno, M-E-N-O. I know some of you have been fishing. It's not the one with the I and two N's. Meno, M-E-N-O. Here are examples of how Christ uses this word that means some form of life. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives, menei, in me and I in him. Remain, menate, in me and I in you. As the branch can't bear fruit by itself unless it remains, menei, 
in the vine. So neither can you unless you remain, menaite, in me. If you keep my commandments, you will remain, menae, in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain, meno, in his love. All forms of the same word. And when folks heard Jesus teaching in the temple, they believed in him. The issue was time. Their belief had not yet developed over time. How does that get affected? Well, infatuation and initial surges of enthusiasm don't prove themselves out unless that enthusiasm continues over time and meets temptation and difficulties with the same amount of enthusiasm. The tests of faith come as disciples stick with Jesus when things are not going well. That's abiding. That's keeping. That's the stamina the chutzpah of faith. And boy, have we needed that this week as we've watched things in Maine. We will know the truth, and the truth will make us free. Freedom is promised to us by Jesus himself if we remain in his word. The more we walk with Jesus, the less we stumble. In our day, faith is challenged by messages from friends and public officials and media And most of those messages are not consistent with living into Jesus and his word. We allow ourselves to be run by worldly engines and wonder why we have little to no sense of the peace that we find when we're reading about Jesus, when we are feeling his spirit. It's easily done. The folks Jesus was speaking to got sucked into it. Even without our modern wonders of technology, they got sucked into it. They understood their salvation as a guarantee because they were heirs of a covenant that was established between God and Abraham. Ever wonder why I emphasize at the table the new covenant as we're grafted into that? Because they had a guarantee, it was so very easy to succumb to faithless activity, things that would not build relationship with God, things that would mask the grace that God provides us. When Jesus said, everyone who commits sin is the bondservant to sin, he erased the line between Jew and Gentile. Jesus put everyone on the same level. They and we are all included as those who commit sin. They and we are all included in the invitation to be faithful to him. The invitation to repent and have peace. The invitation to receive his grace purely. We understand the concept of freedom isn't free, right? As an acknowledgement that there is a high cost to earthly liberty, absolutely. We're grateful for that freedom. We think of it in military terms. We Christians think of it as the price that Jesus paid to cleanse us from sin as well. Do we think of exercising the freedom to participate in self-destructive behavior? Is that how we think? We certainly pay hefty fines for those things in our lives. Sometimes we create our own stuff. Sin binds us into more and more sin, and if not corrected and repented of, it gets ugly and uglier. True freedom As I say in home communions, this is also an opportunity not only to admit your sin, but also to lay your burdens down at the foot of the cross, which is greater. Ah, that sigh of relief. True freedom is understanding that our closeness to Christ, our binding of ourselves to him as Savior, that minnow, keeps us from things that enslave us. If therefore the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The freedom Jesus gives us is freedom plus. Jesus frees us from our own slavery to sin, but the bonus? He also makes it possible for us to be grafted in, sons and daughters of Almighty God. We are heirs of salvation. Think about that. Thank God for that every day. Jesus saves us from evil while we're here. And Jesus saves us from evil forever because we're children of light. There is liberty in him we cannot get from anywhere else. 
God pours out his Holy Spirit to faithful people. God keeps his steadfastness and his grace and truth. He protects and comforts us in all temptations through all the bad stuff, and there's a lot of it, defending us against all enemies of his truth, his word, and gives us his church, his people, his <sighs> saving grace and peace. That is liberty. That is truth with a capital T. Those are the faith facts, and they're brought to us without the need for a human litmus test. Disciples of Christ, live into his word. You won't regret it. Live into his truth. Live into the freedom that only your Savior Jesus can provide. Thanks be to God. Amen.